In this tutorial, we're going to demonstrate the use of viewports to make a split screen multiplayer game. Here we have two players, the red player on the right and the blue player on the left, both of which are moving around in the same world but have a separate view centered on where they are at all times. Let's start by looking at how the world is set up. So I have a character scene here, which is just a sprite uh, using a kinematic body 2D. And its script looks like this. We're using eight-way movement, right, left, up, and down. But I have created two sets of input actions in the project settings. Right one and right two, left one and left two, and so on so that the player one will use the arrow keys and player two will use WASD. And because I named them this way, I can have the script just use whatever ID the character is set to and map that to the actions that belong to it. So that way I can use the same script on both players. So from this, we're gonna create two players, player one and player two, which are inherited scenes. And all I've changed on the player scene is that I have set the name. I've set the ID here. So this is player one. Player two will have an ID of two. And I changed the modulate just to quickly make them two different colors. And next we have a world scene, which is the tile map. I'm just using two different kinds of tiles here. The grass for the move, uh, tiles you can move through and the stone one for the walls which has a collision shape attached to it. And inside of this tile map, I have instanced the two players. So if you run this scene, everything works fine. You have the tile map, your players can move around, everything's fine, except for the fact that the tile map is much, much bigger than the display window. So the characters will go off the screen. Now, if this was a single player game, you would attach a camera to the player and just have that camera follow them around as they moved around the map. But that won't work with two players because you need a camera following each player and you need those cameras to display separately. So that's why we're going to use viewports. Now I want to point out that notice we have made the game work on its own. Even though we haven't done these viewports yet to display the players, we have all of the game features working the way we want. And if you set things up that way, it makes things a lot easier. If you try to combine the split screen view with your game logic, things start to get messy really fast. So now that we have a working game that does everything we want it to do, the only thing we have to worry about is just what we display on the screen. So we're going to do that by creating a new scene, a main scene. I'm using a plain node as the root of this scene because it just needs to contain the other ones. And so on this screen we want to show two viewports next to each other. And to keep them aligned we're going to use a, view, a HBox container. An HBox container is a node that organizes controls in a horizontal row. And so if we make this the full rectangle and we set the alignment to center then anything we place in it will get arranged horizontally starting from the center and we're going to put two things in it so they'll be side by side and I'm going to name this container viewports because it's going to hold the viewports and the things we're going to put in here are viewport containers because a viewport by itself is just a texture basically that's being displayed it doesn't have any position or size properties of its own and so it needs to be placed inside of a container if we want to display it in 2D. So we're going to add a viewport container to hold our viewport. And let's call this container1. And then we will duplicate that so that we have two. Now, I'm actually going to arrange them this way because I'm going to put player1 in container1 and player2 in container2. But I want player one on the right because I used the arrow keys for the for player one. So they should be on the right and the WASD player should be on the left. Now both of these viewport containers are empty, so they are just 
they have no width or anything. So we're going to go in and we're going to change the properties of these to stretch. We're going to turn stretch on. That will make the viewport that's inside the container be sized to match the container. So we don't have to manually set it. So we're going to turn that on both of them. And then to set the size of the viewport container, we're going to use the size flags and set the horizontal to expand. Now notice that made viewport container 2 fill the whole thing until we go over here and set it on container 1. And now they're both equal sized, taking up half of the screen. And you can even in the HBox container put a little uh, separation between them if you want using the custom constants. Like if you put 5 here, you'll have a little 5 pixel gap in between each container. Now let's put a viewport inside of each of these containers. So we'll go add a viewport to each of these. And let's also name these viewport2 and viewport1 so that we in code we'll know which one we're referring to. Now for a viewport to display anything it's going to need a camera 2D which is going to render onto the viewport. So each of these viewports needs a camera 2D attached to it. So do that on each of them. And don't forget on the camera 2D to check the current property. Now normally if you've used cameras before you know that only one camera can be current at a time, but that means only one camera can be current for its viewport. So each of these will be current for its uh, individual viewport. Uh, we can also zoom a little bit because of the scale of everything. If we set the zoom to 0 0.75 on these cameras, they will uh, display a little bit more of the area around the player, which is going to look a little better. So here is your node setup for our viewports. We have the viewport, the HBox container holding the two, keeping them organized side by side, two viewport containers, each of which has a viewport inside of it, and each viewport has a camera 2D. Now, of course, if we run it, we won't see anything because there's nothing for these viewports to render. So let's add to viewport one, I'm going to add the an instance of the world scene. So the world, remember, contains the map and the players. So now when we run it, we will see the world over here in viewport one. And the players are still moving like they were before. The cameras are not following yet, and the other viewport isn't working, but you see how the world is rendered in there. Now, you may notice that on your screen you're not seeing the world rendered in the viewport in the editor. There is a small bug with control nodes, but they don't always update on the screen. And the way you can refresh them is you switch to a different scene and then switch back, you'll see the you'll see it properly. What happened is the viewports are now getting resized. So see how the viewport size is now 510 by 600 because it's being automatically scaled by the viewport container to be that size. And this little blue rectangle is representing the camera's view, right? Because we're zoomed out. Now, if you change something with a layout or something like that with any control nodes, typically refreshing the window like that will, will redraw it the way it's supposed to be. All right, so we see our world inside viewport one. We want to see the same world inside viewport two. But obviously we don't want to have a whole other instance of the world, or we'd have two player ones and two player twos. We want the viewport two's world to be set the same as viewport ones. We want it to render the same environment. And we can do that in code. So I've added a script here, and this is what the script looks like. So up here I've created some variables to use as references to the various nodes that we're going to use. So viewport one and two, camera one and two, and the world itself. And remember that when you're typing these, you know, you can either, when you type the dollar sign, you'll see the auto suggestion pop up and you can go and pick the one you want. Uh, you can also, if you ever have a node over here in the tree, 
if you grab it with the mouse and drag it into the text editor window, it will drop the path in there. Now it always puts quotes around it, which you only need if the names have spaces in them. So I'm going to go ahead and delete those quotes. But so now I have these references to the different worlds, or sorry, to the different nodes. And in the ready, I'm going to set viewport 2's world equal to viewport 1's world. And that way, when we run it now, both of them will be displaying the map. And again, the players are not anywhere we can see them because we haven't set the cameras to follow the players. So they're, you know, they're starting off the screen somewhere. But both viewports are now rendering the world. So now we need those cameras to follow their assigned players. So to each of the camera 2Ds, attach this script. This lets us set a target for the camera. And if we've set a target, it will follow the position of that target. That's all we need the cameras to do is just follow their target. So you might also, I think it looks a little better on the cameras if you disable the drag margin, which means the player will stay centered exactly in the center of its viewport as it moves around. So now each of these cameras can be assigned a target. So in the main, that's where we will do that. So here in main and the ready, I've assigned camera one, its target to player one and camera two to player two. Now when we run it, everything's gonna work the way we want. So there we see the players centered on their viewports and when you move player two the camera follows and when you move player one the camera follows and that's it so now we have our split screen working the way we want now let's just add a couple of refinements so in the main I'm going to set the camera limits so what I have here is a function called set camera limits that gets the size of the world you know, of that tile map and goes through each of the cameras and sets their left, right, top, and bottom limits to those coordinates. So what that does is it makes it so that when you run, the player can't go off of the maps. And if I get all the way up here to the end, see how the camera stops scrolling when I reach the edge of the map and we don't see any of that blank space out there that's not part of the world. Okay, this is a useful thing to use whenever you're using tile maps and have a scrolling camera. All right, we're almost finished, but I want to add one more feature, which is a common use of viewports, and that is to create a mini map, a tiny view of the whole world where we can see the entire map and where we are in it. So I'm going to add another viewport container, but not inside the HBox. This time it's going, to be, it's going to be a separate one that's going to float on top of the rest of the scene. So we got a viewport container, and I'm going to call this minimap. And we're going to set that to stretch, and inside of it we're going to put a viewport, and inside of that we're going to put a camera 2D. Don't forget to set the camera 2D to current. And for this, we want the camera to zoom way out. So I'm going to try 9 by 9. I think that should be pretty good so that we zoom way out and show the whole map. And to size the mini map, we're just going to do this. We're going to eyeball it. We're going to set this to something like about that. And then let's put center bottom on the layout so that it will center it. So our, we want our mini map to show the same world as the rest of them. So we'll set that in the script. We've just put here that set the minimaps viewport world 2D to the same world 2D we're using for viewport one. Now if we run this, we're gonna see the map there. But it's off center and we can fix that by setting the position of the camera. So I'm gonna go over here and set the camera's position to be centered on the screen, which is 512 by 300 and that's going to center the camera on the minimap but now we have this gray area around the edges and that's empty space right outside of the map so we could try and adjust and get the size just right but what we can do is a viewport has a property called transparent background 
And if we turn that on, it will not draw any of that gray space. So now when we run it, we'll see our mini map down there on the screen. And you can see yourself in it as you move around, both players independently, and we have our working mini map. All right, that'll do it for this demo. I hope this helps you when you need to use viewports in your project. Please leave comments below if you have any questions. And you can also download the full project for this from the link that I'll paste in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.